The Kurdistan regional government invited Graham Barker of Cambridge University to perform further excavations at Shanidar Cave in 2011. The plan was to gather soil samples near the original bones and utilize cutting-edge analysis techniques, which were not accessible 60 years ago, to determine the age of the remains, as well as the temperature and ecology of Shanidar's Neanderthal environment. Although researchers did not expect to find further remains belonging to Selecki Neanderthals, they needed to pinpoint their likely locations in order to date Shanidar Cave strata in which they were originally found. They had no idea what Selecki had discovered was only the tip of the iceberg. Archaeologists were amazed to discover the new, partial skeletal remains of another Neanderthal individual. A rib was discovered initially, in 2016, followed by a lumbar vertebrae and a right hand that was still clenched thousands of years later. More bones were taken from the earth in 2018 and 2019. A skull was gently removed, flattened by the weight of dirt above it. Left hand was below the skull. They discovered upper body bones all the way down to the waist. Neanderthals have always been a subject of curiosity, and thanks to new finds at this site, we can now better understand the lives of these early humans with the help of new technology. The high-quality evidence from this Neanderthal site is going to enable us to utilize current technology to gain more knowledge about these early humans. With more discoveries like this one, we'll be able to know more about the lives of Neanderthals and what led to their ultimate extinction. Emma Pombry, also of Cambridge University, the paper's primary author, in the journal Antiquity, stated in 2, 2020, so much research on how Neanderthals treated their dead has to involve returning to finds from 60 or even 100 years ago when archaeological techniques were more limited, and that only ever gets you so far. Because of adjacent ISIS activity, work on the site had to be halted in 2014, but archaeologists were able to continue excavations safely in 2015. They intended to locate the areas where Neanderthals had been discovered in the 1950s in order to date the surrounding sediments. No one expected to come upon any Neanderthal remains. The newly discovered bones were described as heartbreakingly fragile by Pomery, as having the consistency of a wet biscuit when described by Baker. The archaeologists scraped away the dirt around the bone with bamboo kebab sticks, which they sometimes used. The fossils were coated in glue-like consolidant to solidify it before parts containing bone were removed and wrapped in foil. The gender of this individual is yet to be determined by researchers, however the state of its teeth indicates that it is a middle-aged or older adult. Because the scientists aren't sure if this is an entirely new person, or the missing pieces of an incomplete skeleton found by Selecki's team over 60 years ago, the remains have been given the name Shanidar Z. When the Shanidar Cave Neanderthals were originally found, a fascinating issue was raised. Was the cave a burial site? Pollen aggregates in the silt have led to speculation Neanderthals placed flowers on the grave, but this is still debatable. However, researchers now believe there's strong evidence that Shanidar Cave was utilized for internment. The fact that some bones were found articulated, meaning they were still attached, implies the bodies were not left out in the open for scavengers to find. Barker also remarked on supporting evidence found in geological aspects of the site, suggesting some of the bodies were laid in a channel in the cave floor created by water, which had been intentionally dug to make it deeper. There's strong evidence that Shanandar Z was deliberately buried. Bones uncovered by Selecki in the 1950s were found in different layers. In reference to those recently discovered, a rock that could have functioned as a burial site marker during recent excavation, Pomeroy said, We have Neanderthals at different levels, as well as this cluster of bodies next to a very large rock, perhaps some kind of marker. Not only are they returning to the same cave, but they appear to be putting bodies in the same spot. While it's common across human cultures to have places in the landscape earmarked for the dead, Maybe we are seeing traces of this behavior in a different species. Recently, scientists discovered that Neanderthals and humans once interbred. DNA, recovered in Neanderthal remains from northern locales where cooler conditions aided to preserve the DNA, accounts for much of this evidence. 
As some modern humans migrated out of Africa, little is known regarding Neanderthal human interbreeding in Southwest Asia, where Iraq is located. Shannon Darzi might be able to help. CT scans of the fossils reveal a petrous bone, a pyramid-shaped bone at the base of the skull, one of the densest bones in the body. If there's any prospect of DNA being stored in Iraqi Kurdistan's hot, dry climate, it's in that bone. We still don't know why Neanderthals died up. Some scientists believe that modern people outcompeted them for resources. Others have said that they would be unable to adjust to changing environments. Although ice cores from Greenland provide global perspective, snail shell fragments and mouse bone shards found in the silt around the bones could also help reveal clues on Kurdistan's shifting weather during the time when Neanderthals roamed its highlands. Pomroy, pondering on what we currently know regarding Neanderthals, suggested, In recent years, we have seen increasing evidence that Neanderthals were more sophisticated than previously thought from cave markings to use of decorative shells and raptor talons. If Neanderthals were using Shanidar Cave as a site of memory for repeated ritual interment of their dead, it would suggest cultural complexity of a high order. For more information on Shanidar Cave, please check out Part 1. Thank you.